Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transstar Industry Studios here at Babcox Media. When Chrysler released the A604 in 1989, uh, it had adaptive learn and was considered state of the art. That aside, uh, Chrysler did have some issues with the A604. Over the years, there were many upgrades, and it later became the 40TE, 41TE, 41TES, and so on. In the mid-2000s, when Chrysler realized they needed to get a um, six-speed front-wheel drive, instead of using a clean sheet of paper, they decided to utilize the 41TE platform. Uh, on the automatic side of the transmission, meaning the main gear train, the 62TE is pretty much a carbon copy of the 41TE. So from the pump, uh, planetary gear sets, clutch assemblies, right back to the output gear, which is like an output shaft on a rear wheel drive, uh, they're comparable. So what is the difference between 41TE and 62TE? It comes down to the transfer shaft assembly. This happens to be the uh, transfer shaft out of the four speed. It has a transfer gear which messes with the um, output gear. This is the pinning gear which meshes with the uh, differential carrier. And in between, it's just a shaft. This is a 62 TE, and as you can see, a substantial amount of difference between the two. Uh, this is the transfer gear, the pinion gear, which uh, meshes with the differential. In between is what Chrysler calls their underdrive compounder unit. And what it's made up of is a, a planetary gear set, a compounder direct clutch, and a compounder low clutch. All of this basically gives you a high-low, or let's say a reduction direct drive uh, scenario. So where the transmission part of it goes through first, second, third, and fourth, this compounder unit can provide either a reduction or direct drive mode. And that's where you get the additional gears. Even though a 62 TE is considered a six-speed automatic, it actually has seven speeds. To avoid a harsh 6.4 um, downshift, for instance, they uh, have a different operation so that, in effect, they have two different fourth gears. One is called fourth and one is called fourth prime. And when you are on the upswing, the upshifts, it goes first, second, third, fourth to one ratio. But when you have this kick down mode, it goes to a different fourth gear to provide a smooth transition. So it's actually seven speeds, even though it's considered a six speed. Okay, I'm actually going to disassemble this unit. Uh, it's going to be backwards of how it would normally come out of the transmission. Uh, this, of course, is the pinion gear, has tapered roller bearings on each side. And uh, when this is put into the transmission, you got to make sure the proper preload is there or you could end up smoking these, these bearings. This is the planetary carrier assembly. And this is an, like an output, uh, output shaft drum, if you will. And this carrier assembly is held in by two snap rings, one above and one below the um, planetary set. And you got to make sure you get them both back in. But the planetary is just a normal planetary carrier. The next snap ring 
is what uh, prevents the internal gear from coming out. And this internal gear, of course, has a thrust bearing on the front side and also on the back side. Got to make sure both of those are in, as well as there's a cage bearing uh, this back end of the housing itself. And you got to check that. One thing you're going to notice is this uh, toothed spacer. This is actually a selective shim, and this is what sets the overall end play. Preload and end play is critical on this assembly uh, to make it live. So uh, make sure that this goes in. It's tanged so it can go down through the planetary gears uh, uh, to make it easy for assembly. The most frustrating part of this, uh, taking this apart, has to do with this little three tab snap ring. This actually is down inside of this pocket of the sun gear. And whether you use a couple of picks, uh, grind down some snap ring pliers, anything, trying to get this out is uh, a little difficult, but it's gonna have to come out. When you put it back in, make sure that the three tangs are facing down. But uh, again, this is, uh, as far as I can tell, just an assembly snap ring. Uh, at Chrysler, because once this is together, it's all sandwiched. So, um, but anyway, it's, it's very difficult to get out. Once the snap ring is out of this groove, you can pull the sun gear out. Below that is a split bearing, which if you pull the big snap ring out of the direct clutch assembly, pull your backing plate out, it's easier to get to the split bearing which also has to come out before anything else uh, and use caution uh, when you take this out because uh, it's fairly easy to break. As I said, this is the compounder direct assembly and the clutch stack up on this, uh, which you have a bearing on either side of the hub, the clutch stack up on this is actually single-sided frictions. So you have six internal and six external tooth frictions. So these are all single-sided. Make sure they go back in, face in the right direction. The uh, piston assembly, this has a bonded retainer and a bonded piston which merely has a snap ring to hold it in. Not a problem. Uh, these have had issues with the uh, rubber uh, debonding, creating problems. When you get this apart, always check the snap ring groove as well as on the back side, the splines where uh, they connect with the sprag assembly because they can wear. The next thing down, this is the compounder spray unit. And you really can't put this backwards because this has a master spline, uh, actually two master splines that are offset. But what you can do, if you disassemble this, you could flip the element. And if you flip it, you got a problem. So when this thing is down, on the low drum with the inner race held, the outer race has to rotate counterclockwise looking down at it. So if you disassemble this, just make sure of how it goes back together. This is the uh, compounder low assembly, and this is the biggest trouble area, which has to do with the two ceiling rings. There, uh, was initially a lot of wear issues with this, and you would thought that they would have learned from history. When you have ceiling rings 
that ride on aluminum, aluminum grooves, aluminum bores, that ain't making it. And lo and behold, in a short time, these ceiling rings wore these grooves substantially and had a lot of issues. So what Chrysler did uh, was a similar thing that General Motors did on their 4T60Es, which was to tang the uh, ceiling ring and to notch the drum so that they're now non-rotational rings. Anytime that this gets built, whether these are good or not, you should upgrade the drum uh, to the new design. Uh, some of the remanufactured assemblies, they've actually taken off this aluminum tower and they have a steel tower. So whether you get a remanufactured unit or uh, a, a new design uh, aluminum unit, uh, definitely update it. Don't gamble that these rings are not going to wear uh, because that's the, probably the number one issue with this. The frictions and steels on the low assembly, just regular frictions and steels, they are held in uh, with a snap ring. Below that, you just have a normal Belleville return spring. And again, it's just a bonded rubber piston, which uh, also has uh, had issues with wear and delamination. And as I said, uh, aside from this, make sure you don't have uh, wear problems uh, uh, where the clutch plates ride. Now, on the back side of this is where the uh, tapered bearing assembly is. When you go to disassemble this, this is what you're going to see initially. The first thing that has to come off is the transfer shaft nut. You'll have to grind a couple of the little crimps out of the way. Fortunately, the transfer gear is not too bad about coming off of the shaft. Uh, normally, you don't have to use a puller. A lot of times, it'll just slide off, unlike other uh, sprockets. This has a tapered bearing on it. And when you get this out of the way, you have this retainer, which bolts to the back of the low drum. Uh, this assembly can be pretty tough getting out of the case. So what they'll do is to pull four screws out. Chrysler actually has a puller that you can mount to pull this entire assembly out. Um, one of our, one of our local technicians actually made a tool. This is an old assembly nut that he welded another nut on that accommodated his slide hammer, and he just screws that in and uh, hammers the as assembly out. So there are different ways of getting it out, but usually this will not fall out. You're going to have to uh, come up with a way to pull this whole assembly out. In between the uh, the gear and the shaft, again, is a selective spacer, which sets bearing preload. Bearing preload is critical. Uh, there was an issue with Chrysler that they had uh, some whining problems because the preload was not set correctly from the factory. So uh, if you get a, a 62TE with a whine, uh, low miles, it very well could just be a preload issue. But make sure that preload and end play is set on this transmission. Very critical. This uh, retainer merely has the two races for the bearings. And this is a snap ring that holds this whole assembly in. It's a fairly thick snap ring. It's tapered. Make sure you install it with a taper facing out. So. Uh, doing a 62 TE, anyone that's done 41 TE four speeds, the 62 TE is not going to be difficult. Of course, valve bodies are uh, different and so on, but this is what separates the six speed from the four speed. And just uh, use caution 
when you're uh, working with it. Do all the uh, checks that are needed and you shouldn't have an issue. I'm Mark Riley. Thanks for watching. See you next time.